chaps welcome to john robson guitar tuition once again as always i do hope you're well now then as you've probably gathered today what we're doing is taking a look at what it is that makes dave gilmore's solo from pink floyd's comfortably numb work so well not only is it i think one of the most memorable parts of that whole album the wall but for my money, it's also one of the most memorable and beautiful guitar solos you'd ever be likely to hear. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have some kind of idea about what makes it tick. Before we start, uh, I will own up to the fact that I probably didn't play that solo in exactly the same way as Mr. Gilmore plays it. Uh, but I played all the same notes as him, in the same order, with the same phrasing. Uh, so, you know, excuse me if I went to a note on the fifth string when I should have gone to it on the fourth string or whatever. It really doesn't matter, does it? What I've done is uh, broken the solo down into a number of licks, five of them in fact, that we're going to look at in turn, and hopefully you'll get an idea of what it is that makes each of them contribute to the solo as a whole. So, why don't we begin with lick one? Here it is. Now, what makes that lick work is, I think, the first thing about it is the first note. Okay? The first note he plays is an F sharp up here at the 14th fret on the first string. Okay, why is that the perfect note to start this solo? Well, the song alternates between being in the key of B minor and its relative major key of D major. Now, the D major chord, which is the first chord that the solo, that happens underneath the solo rather, the D major chord, the note in that chord which makes it sound like D major as opposed to D minor or D sus2 or D5, is an F sharp note. And when you um, hit that uh, major key part of the song, it really is sort of an uplifting experience, really. It's like you're coming out of the dark minor key um, territory into the sunlit uplands of the major key. And by focusing on that one note, which is effectively the note, the note that gives the major tonality to that D chord, it's really kind of reinforcing that mood at that point in the song. Essentially what Mr. Gilmore is doing here is playing uh, to the song. He's doing what a, a good lead guitarist should aspire to do. He's serving the mood of the song. So that's that explains that first note. Now, um, after that, what he does is a little bend where he takes that F sharp up to a G and back down again. And then he lands on the D note at the uh, 15th fret on the second string, which he immediately bends up to an E note. The chord underneath the solo has changed by this time. Okay, It's gone from a D major to an A major. And an A major chord contains that note of E. If you've watched any of these videos before, you will know the importance of uh, choosing the uh, notes from the underlying chords as a way of making your solos sound melodic. Okay, after that, what happens? He basically plays, as you saw in the close-up, a little uh, kind of rundown uh, at the 14th fret on the 2nd, 3rd and 4th strings. Like that. What's significant about that is, well, it's an A chord, basically, he's just spelling out an A major chord one note at a time. There's an A chord, he's just doing that an octave higher over the A chord. He's just basically playing an arpeggio of the underlying chord. And then when he reaches this E note at the bottom end of that arpeggio, what he does is he takes that down to a D because that is the... Um, first note in, the, in the, the, the chord that comes next. It's a D chord, he lands on a D note, basically. So that's the first lick. Let's have a look at lick number two. OK, 
okay then the second lick what's going on here then well frankly a lot of the same ideas as we saw in the first lick um, this is a great way as I'm sure I've mentioned before uh, I think it was in the Brian May video um, of you know giving a solo a sense of continuity and a sense of direction at the same time um, each lick sounding kind of connected to the previous one because you're basically using the same ideas but also sounding like it's um, moving on somewhere else and expanding upon those ideas by doing things slightly differently and what he's doing differently here is um, towards the end of that um, A major arpeggio walk down that we saw in the first lick as well um, he's playing a group of six notes that goes like this which takes us into the final note of the lick the G note on the third string 12th fret so what is it about that group of six notes well basically those six notes are arranged as two groups of triplets so it's basically three notes on one beat of the bar and then three notes on another beat of the bar this is happening on beats three and four of the bar basically and when you do this when you kind of put notes into groups of triplets like this it can have the effect and it does here of uh, giving the music or the melody that you're playing um, a kind of slightly off balance uh, kind of feel to it um, it won't work in a a uh, piece of music where the entire thing is based upon triplets like you know kind of for instance everybody hurts by rem that uh, that's entirely based that's entirely based on triplets but this song isn't so when you kind of superimpose triplets over a rhythm that isn't based upon triplets then it gives a slightly kind of um as i say off balance off kilter kind of effect which really does fit the motif of the song the song that the, the subject matter is about um, a rock star who's essentially doped up to the eyeballs and um, you know struggling to function basically and th there's just something about um, this group of six notes here which sonically just begins to suggest almost a drunk zigzagging down an alleyway or something like that it fits the mood of the song and the lick finishes on as i say this g note uh 12th fret third string which fits beautifully with the arrival of the c major chord okay i've mentioned that this um this particular solo is in in d major and it is based around a d major tonality but it's kind of going between two modes of d major the ionian mode and the mixolydian mode the mode of d mixolydian contains a c chord if you want more information on modes then just leave a comment below and i'll do another video on them uh, so that's lick two let's move on to lick three <laughs> Okay, so there's nothing earth shattering going on in this lick, but it still contributes to the overall feel of the solo. A couple of clever little concepts going on here. Um, the chords have now changed from um, initially going over a D to an A chord uh, that the first couple of licks were played over. We're now playing over the D mixolydian um, kind of section of the solo if you like where the two main chords are, that we're going between are C and G but we keep um, the overall D major kind of spirit of D major alive if you like with the first part of this lick uh, what he does is he takes the uh, E note at the ninth fret on the third string and bends it up two frets to an F sharp okay um, as we mentioned in lick one that F sharp note is the important note in giving any kind of D tonality it's D major sound and he then kind of follows that by taking it back down to the E note and then landing on a, a D note so it's essentially this little run of notes it's almost three blind mice that isn't it <laughs> um, 
and uh, yeah that really does kind of fit a D major tonality even though there isn't a D chord happening at the moment he's still reminding us that D is the overall tonal centre of what's happening just with that little group of three notes which he then slides that D note 12th fret D string up to uh, an E note again 14th fret to land on the D note which is um, part of the G major chord which has arrived by this time so again he's kind of focusing on chord notes um, and he's also reminding us that although we haven't got a D chord happening at the moment D major is very much the uh, tonal centre of what's going on so that's lick 3 let's move on to lick 4 <laughs> Okay, this lick is all about contrast and continuity. Uh, we'll deal with the contrast part of it first of all. What we've got here is the fastest and slowest part of the solo kind of right next to each other. This is almost like when um, a painter, an artist, uh, puts the lightest light colour right next to the darkest dark colour in the uh, painting and that creates a focal point that your eye is drawn to and this is kind of an analogy for what's going on here um, what we've got the, the fastest part of the solo and this is fast in a relative sense this is an Ingve kind of speed you understand uh, the fastest part of the solo is where we've got this little flurry of notes like that okay which goes 14th fret on the D string to 12th fret 14th fret on the A string to 12 and 14 again on the D and then finishing on the F sharp note at the um, 11th fret on the third string okay now once we've landed there what happens next is that a C major chord arrives and a, note, a good strong note to target in a C major chord is G and that's what he does he bends that F sharp note up to a G and he does that quite slowly and it's kind of a lazy kind of stretch to get there and you know you've got that slow bend next to the little fast-ish flurry of notes and that's what, what's happening in terms of contrast the other interesting thing that's happening there is that he bends that note quite slowly up to the G note uh, that F sharp up to the G note um, the G note as we've discussed is part of the C major chord but the F sharp note isn't and not only is the F sharp note not part of the C chord it's probably the most dissonant note choice that you could choose for a, a, a C major chord um, it's a sharp fourth or flattened fifth or whatever it's a really dissonant sound so by taking his time to um, reach from that F sharp up to the G it really um, enhances that sense of tension and then resolution uh, just by that one little bend just taking his time to, to move it there so that's the whole contrast um, element of it. What about the continuity? Well the last time we um, played over a C chord in this solo, the main note if you remember uh, it came out of this that lick there with that um, triplet run down to finish on the the same G note. So this, when the same chord comes along again what he does is he kind of references what he's done earlier by landing on the same strong note of the chord and it gives that whole thing a sense of continuity so that's lick four let's have a look at lick five right there is a sense in this final lick of everything moving full circle we're coming back to where we began this is achieved by the use of the uh, F sharp to G 14th fret to 15th fret bend on the top E string that we 
so initially in lick one and then in lick two okay and uh, another reference that we uh, we've got here which we saw earlier in the, in the solo is that use of triplets um, the phrase at this point goes there's that little six note grouping of notes again it's a different six notes to the last time when we saw the triplets being used but it's the same rhythm uh, what we've got is one two three four five six notes um, played evenly across two beats of the rhythm and that word evenly is an interesting one because um, if you want to hear the sound of triplets in your head if you want to instinctively know what triplets sound like then just say the word evenly on each beat so you get evenly evenly like that that will give you the sound of triplets handy little uh, way of remembering it that um, so uh, th that's the kind of rhythmic um, structure of what's going on here what's happening in terms of note choices well we're heading towards a G major chord so what he does is after the uh, that little run there he plays just a basic G major arpeggio which are the second group of three notes in that um, double triplet run the second triplet basically and then he lands on a D note 12th fret on the 4th string which is the note that um, kind of corresponds to the arrival of the G major chord a D note is in a G major chord as I'm sure you know okay then we're on to the last little bit of the lick and the solo uh, he slides down to the uh, ninth fret well this is where I'm playing it ninth fret on the fourth string uh, for a B note which again is part of the G major chord that's happening underneath uh, bends it up slightly to the C and back down again and then uh, B C B hammer on pull off to finish on the A note where I'm playing this seventh fret on the fourth string and that A note heralds the arrival of the A major chord which is where the vocals come back in and into the rest of the song so there you go those are the five licks um, as I see them in uh, the solo from Comfortably Numb by David Gilmore um, as I say not only one of the most memorable uh, guitar solos on the album but I think one of the most memorable and lovely guitar solos you're ever going to hear uh, I hope you found this useful I hope you found it interesting I hope you've maybe even found it a little bit inspiring if you have then please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell that way you will get to see more videos like this and if you live on Teesside in the northeast of England and you would like some tailored one to one guitar tuition, give me a shout via the details at the end of this video. Even if you don't live on Teesside, then give me a shout anyway because I also do lessons via Skype. And whichever way you do it, your first lesson is free. Uh, right, folks, um, that's it for today. I hope, as I say, you've enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing you all again next time. And until then, bye for now.